Hey y'all, welcome back to Harmon Homestead. Guys, it's getting cool here in central Alabama. The wind chill tomorrow morning is supposed to be one degree for where I'm at. So it's very cold right now. Can't plan outside. There's nothing much to do, but you can be dreaming and getting prepared for this spring because it'll be here in just, you know, a few weeks really to be planting. Next week, we're supposed to be in the 70s. Um, 60, 70, so, you know, it's, it's gonna warm up pretty quick here in Alabama. So, I did a video on BT, and I called it our homestead class. What I'm gonna start doing is just doing informational videos. I think they're very important for you to learn about. Go back and watch that video. I'm gonna create a playlist. I already have homestead class with Harmon Homestead. Just watch the video, and I'm doing all this research to help you guys, okay, as well as myself. So, today I'm gonna do a homestead class video on companion planting. Companion planting is very important in the garden because certain plants help other plants. They deter pests, they put off certain nutrients in the soil, certain aromas that will keep pests away. So it's very, very important. This year, guys, if you look up 2024 shortages for anything, the number one thing is vegetables and fruit because they're saying it's not going to be a good growing year, they think. They think prices are go going to go up. That's obvious, they've been going up each year. So you need to plant as much as you can and it's time to get serious. It's time to plant and, and do well and get as much food as we ever have. This year we did and we are so satisfied with that. And it's a good feeling to have all of that food on the shelf, okay? So that's why behind me, I've got all of these transplants Got my seed starting cups. Look at that, it's dozens. This is just one piece of what I've started. We've got tons, we're going to have tons. These are all brassicas, cool weather crops. Over here, I've got some herbs that I'm starting. These are not on heat mats. I've got another location that is. So let's just get right into companion planting. I've got some seed packets here of just examples of what I've got. Go back and check out my seed haul video if you would like to know what I'm growing this year. Big rainbow tomato, that's just one of the tomatoes I picked. Tomatoes, what do you need to plant with tomatoes in the garden? The first thing that you need to have, basil. Basil improves growth of tomatoes. And guys, what I'm doing is pretty much reading off the Old Farmer's Almanac. I've got an article that I've, I'm using to do this. I'm posting it in the link. The link of it will be in the description of this video, okay? So basil, basil improves tomatoes. Also peppers, improves growth enhances flavor, so they say, and you can use basil in so many recipes. You can use it in all different things throughout the home. Basil, 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 basil. Also, borage and parsley. Here is our borage. What is borage? A lot of y'all are saying that's what it is. See that Scorpio? That's the sign of the day that I planted these in. Go back and check out my video, Planting by the Signs, and that'll explain why I'm doing that. Um, Borage and parsley. You can use all this around the home as well. These are what's good for tomatoes, parsley. So let me show you, my borage just germinated here in my little seed cups. I set him to the front. Let me find him there. I always just ride all over these and keep it year after year. Borage, one six. Today is January the 19th, there he is. It's a pretty little, it's a big seedling. Um, a big little seed coming up. So. I'm happy about that. Now, what do those herbs also do for tomatoes besides enhanced growth? They prevent tomato hornworms. Tomato hornworms, if you've ever had tomato plants, you'll notice these little green worms that look like caterpillars all over your plants. They will eat the plant to the where the leaves are not there. They will annihilate it. The plant can't photosynthesize. It can't produce, it can't grow and they will eat your tomatoes. So tomato hornworms usually will just go pick them off and stomp them. If you've ever stomped a hornworm, just green liquid goes everywhere. That's pretty cool too. It's a lime green worm. It looks like it's got eyes all the way down its back. Huge worm, okay? Big fat, huge worm. So for tomatoes, borage, parsley, and basil you need. Now also with the basil this year, I am planting holy basil. Holy basil, that's different than regular basil. If you know anything about basil, there is a difference. I will probably, the one thing I'll go back and get, I thought I had basil here, I don't, regular basil. That's different, holy basil, there's a difference. Okay, so that's for tomatoes. Carrots. I've got, I'm just showing you an example, okay? So these are some of the carrots we're gonna be planting very soon. What do you have to worry about with carrots? Carrot flies, 
sage. Sage is excellent for preventing carrot flies, white flies on the plants. The only thing, do not, here, here's the sage, okay? Sage is great for dressing. If you're doing like uh, turkey and dressing, cornbread dressing is excellent for it. The only thing, do not plant dill. And I have dill over here somewhere. There we go. There's bouquet dill. I planted it January the 6th. You can see the little sprout there. Beautiful. I also have fern leaf dill as well. Do not plant dill by carrots. They will cross pollinate, okay? Your carrots may taste like dill. Your dill may taste like carrots. If you've ever seen carrot tops and dill, they look the same. So I wouldn't plant them together anyways because I'd want to know what's dill and what's carrots, but don't plant those two together. But plant sage and carrots together. That will help with that pest. Next, I have corn. Okay, here's some of my blue Hopi corn. I usually do peaches and cream for sweet corn. Doesn't matter, corn is affected by corn earworm. Okay, corn worms. We don't want that. I talked about that with BT. There's really nothing you can plant to keep those away from what I can understand. But what does work for corn, and I don't have a picture of it, beans. Yes, I do, yes, I do. I've got my, let's see here. Cherokee black pole beans is what I'm gonna plant beside the corn this year. Now you can plant bush beans. You can plant any kind of bean. You can plant any kind of pole bean. I'm just showing you what I bought this year. Um, so the beans will run up the corn. So the corn provides its support. You must plant your corn several weeks in advance. Let it get on at least a foot tall. I would wait till it get, got taller. Then plant your beans beside it because your beans will outgrow your corn. What beans do is provide nitrogen. So do peas. I have planted sweet corn and peas together before, black-eyed peas, pink-eyed purple whole peas. Beans and peas do wonderful. They provide nitrogen. If you know anything about corn, corn needs nitrogen. Those two work beautifully together. Also, squash. That gets into the Three Sisters garden. Squash shades the roots, keeps the roots cool, moist. Um, I've never done a Three Sisters. I don't like how everything's a tangled mess. If you've got peas and squash, the pole beans and, and squash might be the best thing. And the squash that they're talking about, you can use any kind, but pumpkins work beautifully, okay? Now, let me show you this. This works with everything in the garden. Nasturtiums. I have mentioned this in my last few videos over and over and over, the use of nasturtiums around the home, things you can do with this. I have bukus of these this year nasturtiums they i couldn't find anything you couldn't plant it with they are a trap crop for a lot of pests they do wonderfully with some plants some they just may not help that well but they're edible okay the, the flowers and leaves are edible and it's it's great now let me show you here i'm going to show you this nasturtium this is jewel mix from in my gardener and i want you to see the seeds if you've never seen this before they're huge and they're oh I just dropped one. I um, dropped another. They're huge, tough seeds. They've got an outer coating on the shell that is super thick, okay? So what you need to do when you plant those or before you seed start with those, I'm gonna start mine indoors. I've got my husband's knife here. It's a Swiss Army knife and it has a nail file on it. File off that seed, okay? Skin it down. Get that tough coating off of that seed before you plant it. If not, you're gonna have huge trouble germinating those. So that's just a little tip. Okay, nasturtiums go great with cabbage. Got cabbages back here. They go great with any kind of coal crop, brassicas. They keep caterpillars away, okay, that will eat your plants. That's excellent. So nasturtiums, get nasturtiums this year. They're beautiful. You can leave these indoors. You can have these as an indoor plant. They'll um, run. I wouldn't get a humongous variety. That's the only problem. They will run and they'll spread out humongous, okay? Now, I wouldn't get the tall climbing varieties. People actually run these on fences, garden fences. They're beautiful. Don't put that in your garden. But they are annuals, so the beautiful thing is is that you won't have to worry about that mess taking over your garden, okay? Once it's done, it's done. A lot of these plants do well with mint. I've not mentioned that because I don't want you planting mint all in your garden. If you've got a raised bed, it will take it over. You can't get rid of it hardly, so I'm not recommending that. Peppers. 
Basil increases the growth, improves growth. And here is my little purple cayenne that was started on January the, or December the 15th. Even the leaf is purple, okay? So peppers and tomatoes do beautifully with basil. Basil, basil, basil. Beans, nasturtiums, keep aphids away. Any kind of bean, green bean, whole bean. So what might be good, if you don't wanna do a total three sisters, plant your corn, plant beans around it, and then plant nasturtiums around that. You're just gonna have, to, the only thing I don't like about the three sisters, guys, I don't mind the beans at all. I don't like the stuff that takes over where you have trouble getting to your corn. I like to, because I have to go hill up my corn. I have to side dress my corn. Sometimes I've side dressed it twice to get huge 13 foot corn. So the whole point is, is to get to your corn to work it. That's the only thing I don't like, but otherwise, Nasturtiums are good for that with beans. Beets, I've got beets somewhere in here. Here's bull's blood beet. Beets are great for your soul, by the way. They add minerals, nutrients. If you've ever wondered why beet tastes like dirt, well, there's so many nutrients in this, okay? It's good. Um, I like pickled beets, roasted beets. Cold crops, plant beside those. Any kind of, all this, brassicas, cabbage, kale, broccoli, things like that. Garlic and onions keeps boars and cutworms away that may eat these, okay? So anything with a root is liable to get a cutworm. We've got our onions. We're gonna interplant those. Just know when you're doing companion planting, my onions are gonna be in the ground a whole lot longer than my beets. So you want to go back once you pull your beets up and plant something else that goes well with onions right there beside the onions. That's what we're doing with our spring and summer and fall gardens this year. We're gonna do a very early garden, still have room where some of this stuff's lasting. Just know that onions, they're gonna be there for a while, at least 115 days till they mature. So just keep that in mind, but beets and onions do great together. Broccoli, oregano, and any kind of cold crop. Now they said plant the rest of your cold crops beside the broccoli, that way you can cover them with a net to keep um, pests from getting to them. I agree with that to a certain point. To me, if you space stuff out, like if you do one row of broccoli and then plant something that's great beside it, like oregano, okay? Let me make sure, yes, oregano. Then plant something else, then plant something else. Then way over here, plant another broccoli round or either cabbage. To me, you've got more of a chance of one surviving than the other because they're spaced out. If you start planting just rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of broccoli or cabbage, you're increasing the smell of that in the air. You're increasing the amount that something's got to feed on pretty much. That bug's gonna go over there and say, hey, this is the Golden Corral Buffet. We're fixing to tear it up instead of having just a few plants. You see what I'm saying? So I, I wouldn't plant them together. Not like that, not hundreds and bukus, but that's just me. Oregano, I have, I showed you the regular oregano that I've got planted and I showed you the pelletized on our seed haul video. I would get that. Oregano is horrible, horrible. I barely could see it in the package. This, I would highly suggest getting that. Oregano you can use for so many things around the home. All of this stuff you can turn around and use. It's not wasted. If you're, if you're worried about this, take a little spot in your garden and just plant a little bit of it and see. Just one little thing. See how it does. See if you can use it. Um, I, I definitely would do the nasturtiums. Hanging baskets containers, and if you really got worried about it and didn't want to plant it in ground in your raised bed or your garden, put it in a pot and put it out there beside the crop. That way you can just move the pot, move the bucket, whatever, the planter, when you're done with it. Um, next, cabbage. Cabbage, they're all, all through here. I've got tons of cabbages. Um, I did more cabbages than I've ever done this year. Garlic, sage, I showed you the sage. Sage keeps cabbage moths away, and lo and behold, nasturtiums. Cabbage and nasturtiums. Guys, plant them in your garden this year. Plant them everywhere, plant them all you can, okay? Carrots, don't do deal, we talked about that. Chives do increase the growth. I've got chives somewhere here, somewhere, somewhere. I've got chives. And yes, I started those. January the 6th. Now I've got one chive coming up somewhere. Pretty much it looks like bouquet deal. It looks like deal. It's a thin little thing coming up. Chives do great with carrots. They increase the growth. 
Rosemary and sage are also good for the carrot fly. Do you see it? It's the same herbs. The only one you have to worry about is dill and carrots. Don't plant. It's the same ones over and over do great. Oregano does great for cucumbers. Cucumbers do great with dill, okay? So think of dill pickles. Cucumbers do dill and nasturtiums to keep bugs away. Aphids and mites, the dill will keep away. Nasturtiums keep beetles off of it, aphids, and increase the growth and flavor. Oregano is great as well. Radishes and nasturtiums repel cucumber beetles. So plant radishes beside your cucumbers. Now, a lot of this where you're intertwining it and planting with each thing, a lot of it's gonna be cra trap crops. So if you plant radishes there, they may wanna eat the radishes instead of the cucumbers with some of this. I don't. I think the radish just deters the beetle itself. But just know if you plant these nasturtiums or anything else, it's probably drawing the bug to it instead, okay? For a lot of this. So don't be disheartened, but it may save your actual vegetables. Um, Let's see here, what else do we have? Lettuce, chives, onions, garlic. Um, those are all great for aphids. Basil increases growth. Basil's great for a lot. Radishes is a trap crop for flea beetles with lettuce. Lettuce, radishes, cabbage, all this goes in the garden around the same time. Radishes are quick. I've got bukus of radishes here. Bukus, and the reason I have so many is because they're so quick growing. Honestly, guys, I could probably go plant these next week and have a harvest, okay? I'm just saying, and get them in 28 days if they're regular little radishes. You can't beat a radish. And they're great roasted. It's not a, a terrible plant to me. I like radishes. Um, and they're beautiful and they're fun. Okay, onions, marigolds. Keeps the onion maggot fly away. Now, I have talked about calendula. I've got calendula here. Let's see. Here's my Pacific Beauty mix right there, calendula. That looks like a marigold. It's a part of the marigold family, but it is not marigold. Now I have calendula sprouting everywhere. Here's the pink surprise calendula. I started January the 6th. These are pretty quick to come on up, okay? There's that. Calendula might work, but it's still not a plain marigold, okay? You can eat parts of calendula. You cannot marigolds, totally different. Onions and marigolds are great together. Peas do well with carrots, radishes, spinach, chives. Let's see here, where's my peas? And believe it or not, guys, I have the worst luck with peas. These are green arrow peas. I'm gonna get my peas from the feed store, but I got on a whim this week. I started every one of these indoors in my little seed cups. I probably have two to 300 that I'm gonna have as transplants. You can plant these really close together, two to three inches, the actual plant. Now, what I'm going to do, and these are not climbing, really. They'll, they'll, they say climbing, but guys, they just, it's fine, okay? What I'm going to do is try to transplant these. People warn against that, saying that the roots are too shallow to handle it, but I have had such great luck with what I'm doing in here with thousands of seedlings. I know what I'm doing, and I think I can get it to work. Um, either here in February, when we plant, it's too cold for these to germinate. The soil's just too wet or something just happens, okay? So I'm gonna start these indoors. Peas, carrots, radishes, spinach, chives, all are great, they deter aphids. Don't plant garlic and onion, it stunts the pea growth. That's the one thing it says don't do. Deal with carrots, don't do. Garlic and onion with peas, do not do, okay? So once you start companion planting again, if you go replant something, you've got to know what is good with it. One crop may be good, but the other one may not be. Peppers, basil, told you that. Marjoram and oregano, do well. Potatoes, beans increase growth. So any kind of bush bean, I would plant beside potatoes, or if you've got potatoes next to a cattle panel or a trellis, run your pole beans up beside it. It, it at least will benefit that one row. Um, cat mint repels Colorado potato beetles. We don't have cat mint, we've got cat nip. I think there's a difference. There may not be, I don't know. We're not growing potatoes this year, I've still got Dozens of quarts that my uncle sit down of potatoes that we can that he grew. So I'm not growing those. Um, calendula and horseradish is great for the Colorado potato beetle. So if you've got those, plant those with your potatoes. Cilantro keeps the potato beetle away and aphids. We've got cilantro that'll go in the ground at the very end, like right before. Well, right when I'm planting, I'm direct sowing everything for like my bush beans after frost has passed. Radishes, I told you, nasturtiums. Or I th maybe I didn't. Radish, nasturtiums, trap crop. 
Peas give nitrogen um, they increase radish growth if you want to plant radishes and peas together. But again, nasturtiums for radishes. I've not found anything nasturtiums is not good with. Winter and squash pumpkin. Marigold. Okay, we talked about calendula, but it's different. Still might be worth a shot. Okay, I'm not going to plant marigold if I can't eat it. If I can't use it, if I can't make a tincture out of it, I'm not going to fool with it. Okay, I'm only going to use something that I can. Winter, uh, and I've got, let's see here. I thought I had a seed packet. I've got them all just jumbled up, y'all. Here's my Big Max pumpkins. Marigolds, oregano, and number one thing to keep squash beetles away, nasturtiums. So, y'all, get these, okay? Spinach, cilantro, oregano, rosemary, beans, and eggplant are all beneficial. This is the same stuff. That's the first time I've heard eggplant. Uh, zucchini nasturtiums, aphids, and white flies. Keep them away. It's a trap crop with the zucchini. So, if you can see here, all that I've got and all that I've got started, we're going to plant these, the cool crops together. We are going to rotate everything and pull this up, put something else in. When my cool weather crops come up, I'm going to be planting tomatoes. I've never done that. Usually, I plant my tomatoes Good Friday. That's what I do. It's a tradition for me. It's what I like. A lot of Appalachian folklore will tell you plant cabbages on St. Patrick's Day. Um, it's cooler up north of us in the Appalachian Mountains. We're on the very tip. I'm planting my cabbages here in central Alabama zone 8A. I'm going to plant them within the next probably two weeks. Ooh, that's going to be iffy. I've got to get these hardened off. They're bigger than they look in the photos. Let's see what this, this is my black magic kale. Look how beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And I started that November the 26th. Okay, it takes a long time to do it. You see these huge open windows I've got so it's good enough and they're up high, they get the heat. Let me show you, these are one of my more pitiful things. This is dinosaur kale that I started December the 18th. Now this was not my best, I just let it kind of ride. You go from that, it gets leggy, put it up in that red solo cup, that, that plastic cup, and it'll boom, okay? So that right there, that's, is you can do it indoors, but learn now because it takes a long time to plan this stuff out and it takes a long time to get these herbs germinated. So the main thing we've learned from this, nasturtiums you need. Dill is great for cucumbers. Dill is not good for carrots. Rosemary, sage, sage was used for a lot. Oregano, um, that's really the heavy hitters. Everything else I said, try it. It doesn't hurt to have it. If anything, put it in buckets beside the plants, see if that helps. I think it would be better if it's in the soil, putting nutrients into it, but it can't hurt. So guys, we're gonna start some more today. I've got bukus and we're gonna go right back after it because we're going to use the herbs indoors, outdoors, make it work for you. Have the best garden you've ever had this year. This is how to companion plant. Check on the link below in the description from Old Farmer's Almanac. You can go read all this yourself. And now also, one last thing, there's a lot more plants you can plant for trap crops. Someone told me on the live stream, I believe it was Blue Hubbard squash, is a huge trap crop for squash vine borers. Look into that as well. That may be our next video. All right, guys, we'll see you guys next time on Harmon Homestead.